Welcome to Proven and Probable. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson, and joining me today is the chairman of Sprott U.S. Holdings, and we are live at the Oxford Club Investment U Conference, where the theme is energy. Rick, thank you for joining us today. Pleasure, Maurice. Thanks for having me. You know, Rick, we were talking about energy all day today, all this week. Uh, would you share with the listeners, what is the current state of energy? I think we have a train wreck coming in energy investment, Maurice, for reasons that we shared yesterday. There was about $3.5 trillion in energy credit extended through the last decade. And that energy credit was extended based on the $90 oil price. The problem with that is that we're at $42 oil price. <laughs> the company's annual reports come out this month, April, and I suspect that the, the trouble will take three months to percolate through the system. But at some point in time, the conjunction of $40 oil against $90 assumptions and $3.5 trillion credit problem is going to collide. My suspicion is that that happens in the third quarter of this year and extends all the way through 2017. For investors who are invested going into the crisis, it's going to be problematic indeed. For investors who have had the courage to invest during the crisis with a well-selected energy portfolio of bonds, junk bonds, and equities, will achieve the type of returns that occur in equity markets only once in a decade. This will be the chance in the next 10 years, if you are an energy investor, to build a portfolio that will last for you for the entire decade. Well, as a value investor, that's the most exciting news I could possibly have. <laughs> have. Would you share with the listeners what's the current state of uranium? I, I think the uranium market uh, probably is in a very long bottoming process. I was way early on uranium. I was expecting better global economic growth than we got. The consequence of weak growth was that consumer demand in advanced markets, the United States included, has been much more tepid than I had anticipated. That led to lower demand for energy in places that export stuff to people like us, Japan being an example. The weak demand for electricity, coupled by the collapse in oil prices, which lowered the price of energy generally, has been very difficult on the uranium market. I had originally expected the uranium market to head up in 2016, 2017. It wouldn't surprise me now to see the uranium market head up in 2018 or 2019. That being said, there's probably opportunities in select uranium stocks ahead of the rush. I'll note, however, that uh, our good friend Steve Sugarroot says contrarian investors buy what's hated, buy what's under-owned, but buy what's at an uptrend. Perhaps you're better off to wait for the beginning of the uptrend. Well, you're, you're famous for quoting that bear markets are the authors for bull markets. That's correct. Who's narrating right now? Is it the bull market? It depends on the commodity you're in. I mean, certainly the discussions that we had last year concerning gold were very, very timely. The gold is up nicely and the gold stocks are up spectacularly. Perhaps it's time to, on the most speculative of the gold issues, take a few profits and look at where to put them. But the truth is, Maurice, the industrial materials, the things like iron ore, the things like coal, the things like uranium, the things like copper, the things like oil and gas, probably have 18 months of torture left in them before they head up dramatically. Well, that's important to note. Let me ask you this. I'm an investor. I may not have the time or expertise in the natural resource space. Let's talk about a company that is the preeminent name in the natural resource space. A company you might be familiar with. Let's talk about Sprott. Flattering gets you everywhere. <laughs> Sprott is, we think, uh, the world leader by way of market share in investing in small cap natural resource equities. We're also uh, aggressive investors in physical precious metals. We manage about $5 billion in gold, silver, platinum, palladium, and exchange traded ETFs in the resource sector. Uh, certainly, given that specialization, if your listeners agree with your own thesis and my thesis with, reg with regards to both contrarian investing and natural resource investing, we're probably the natural place to be. Uh, we have 160 investment products available for investors. So almost without regard to the investors' means and needs, we have products which will suit their goals if their goals are related to precious metals, natural resources, and uh, contrarian investing. You know, we're in a bear cycle, and your company right now is offering about 5% dividend. The stock is up a little bit, Maurice, so uh, the consequence of that, because the dividends are the same as the dividends, a little lower, but it's lower for good reason. Yes, it is. Because we cut it. And that's an interesting point. Many of your listeners probably intend to participate in natural resources through mutual funds. I want them to think about the arithmetic. If they buy a, like a Vanguard natural resources mutual fund, they pay a 1% management fee. If they own Sprout, which also gives a diversified portfolio, 
they get a four and a half percent dividend. I think it's arithmetic. Would you rather pay one or get four and a half? I think the answer is quite obvious. Rick, let's talk about one last thing for me. How about the dip? You know, we're looking at the end. We're in a bear cycle. And let's talk about Sprott Inc. How much debt do you have? Zero. Uh, Sprott stands for something. Uh, Sprott Inc. was constructed by a guy named Eric Sprott. And Eric Sprott was concerned about debt at the government level and debt in the financial services level. It would be extremely disingenuous to hold ourselves out as financial services solution provider for people who are concerned about debt and for us to be over indebted. We have in excess of $300 million in working capital and no liabilities. Um, our balance sheet is public, unlike many other money managers, you can see uh, what our income statement balance sheet looks like. And by the way, they look pretty good. Yes, they do. And full disclosure, I am a shareholder. Rick, in closing, for investors that have a portfolio and are concerned about the health of it, is there someone that's brought that will take the opportunity to look at their portfolio and give them the uh, that's me. Uh, email me, Rick Rule. That's our rule at SprottGlobal.com. Put your portfolio in the text, and I will rank your portfolio companies on a one to ten scale. One being the best, ten being the worst, with comments as appropriate. Understand that these aren't recommendations because I don't know you as an individual. These are company rankings, but I'm happy to do it. Absolutely no obligation. Rick, and it's just one last thing for me. What is it on the website? Uh, www.sprockglobal.com or if you're in the United States and Canada, 800-477-7853. Rick Rule, thank you for joining us today on Proven and Profitable. Pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.